If progesterone is an optimal range, is that an indication that pregnenolone is not needed? If so, what are the optimal levels of progesterone? Okay, that's a good question. So, for a lot of people, they won't be able to get a pregnenolone test based on whatever country they live in. Um, outside of the US, Australia, and I believe Germany, um, it is quite difficult to get pregnenolone checked. So, progesterone is. It, it can act as a proxy for pregnenolone activity, but it is far from a slam dunk. Um, in my experience working with people on this, if their progesterone is undetectable, it is something where it will warrant further investigation into pregnenolone, either through ordering a test via, maybe it's a bit more of a convoluted process to get that, or potentially a trial of pregnenolone, depending on what go, what's going on. The issue that guys are going to have is that pregnenolone supplementation will often, but not always, and this is why pregnenolone is so difficult to work with. It's a very unpredictable hormone. It will often increase progesterone quite significantly. So if a guy already has robust progesterone levels and he takes pregnenolone, that can take his progesterone levels up to a point that it becomes super physiological and therefore anti-androgenic. Unfortunately, progesterone in high levels will not only uh, act as an androgen receptor antagonist because it also binds to the androgen receptor and will compete with testosterone, DHT, etc., but it will also inhibit 5-alpha reductase. So this is why when you take pregnenolone and you don't need it or you take too much pregnenolone and you already have healthy progesterone levels, you will often get um, anti-androgenic symptoms. And one of my favorite terms for this which is not a good thing, but it's a, it's a bit of a funny term, is, is gummy worm dick. And for anyone who experiences gummy worm dick, they will know exactly what that means. You lose basically all sensation to the penis. So in terms of what are optimal progesterone levels, in my opinion, it's anything above a zero. Um, anything that is detectable is fine. Um, more is not necessarily better. And it's also one of those things where progesterone is something that we only need in small amounts in men. Neil Rousier is very against pro, uh, progesterone supplementation in men. And the more I have worked with guys on this, the more I can see why that is in practice. It may sound good on paper. People may cherry pick the neurosteroid benefits or the anti-stress benefits of progesterone and thinks, think it sounds like the, the bee's knees. But in practice, it's definitely not very well tolerated. So it, there are plenty of guys walking around with undetectable progesterone levels, and they don't have any issues whatsoever. So as long as it is detectable, it is fine. Um, and that's what I would be really encouraging guys to do is if you're having problems and you're having negative symptoms and your progesterone level is towards the, let's say, the bottom end of whatever reference range you have and the reference range is very, very strongly vary as well. Increasing your progesterone from the bottom of the reference range to the top of the reference range is going to solve zero of your problems. It may even make them worse. So for the units that we use in Australia, the reference range typically goes up to about, I think, a 3.9 or a 4. Um, I say anything above a 0 0.5 is fine. I believe in the States, the units, I, I can't remember the actual units off the top of my head, um, but I believe the reference range goes up to about a 1 or I think a 1.5. Again, anything above undetectable is fine. And one thing in my experience for guys who are, you know, maybe troubleshooting or working on this at home is if a guy naturally has high progesterone levels, let's say they naturally have a higher progesterone level above the reference range. And then this is just my experience. These guys tend to be the guys who need a higher free testosterone level than the average guy to get dialed in properly.